Racetrack, as we saw, you see Dallas going in really low in that corner, then going up the racetrack. You can see he's putting his foot down just like normal. I think we'll see a blue groove. Is it going to get that dry? Maybe in a few spots as the white flag comes out here in our first group, first round of practice. Meese at the top spot with the 17.827, Ralph, but I don't know. I think there might be some rubber going down up on the high side of the racetrack. There's probably one of the odds on favorites to win here tonight, the 44, Brandon Robinson. And he had a challenging trip through here last year. If you remember, he uh, hit the ground here a year ago, didn't he? Yeah, hit the ground and bounced all the way up to the wall over there coming off of turn number two. So uh, I think he's uh, trying to forget all about that, try to yeah. wake his way towards the front. But uh, they've had one new team member on their team. and It's made a big difference. That is Kale Kochman, who is now doing the suspension for the 44 bike. Oh, look at that thing sliding out from behind him there. The back end just wanted to step, step out. out on him. That's that's a dry track yeah. normal reaction. So there is a few, like I mentioned a few moments ago before you uh, joined me up here, it's going to be drier up top because the moisture runs down the racetrack. Right. Colby Carlisle getting ready to go. Max Whale. So 17827, that's the first shot at our $500 for our Flow Racing fastest lap of the day. The fastest lap of the main event last year, 17.812. So they're already in fast right in lap zone. times already here in our first group. Well, let's go down trackside to Chris Beat, who has more to add. And guys, one final thought on that first practice session. Dan Bromley on the Alam Honda up in fourth. Now, I spoke with him yesterday, and we may not have seen the progress that that bike made in Daytona, but we will certainly see it here. And I think Dan Bromley may have a lot to offer this Super Twins class this season on that Honda Twin, which has not seen victory lane in quite some time. It's exciting to see the 62 out here, and then we're going to see Morgan out here as well on the 13 on his right there on the bottom. There you see him come by the first laps he's had on that bike. Yeah, that, that, he hasn't even, he rode one single lap on that. He did not get to ride that bike down in Florida as we go back out front, the 36, the Flying Tomato, Colby Carlisle. But yeah, watching the Hondas, it, it will be interesting to see. They've had one race under their belt, two races if you count you know, each night on the 62 bike, but the 13 doesn't even have a single lap in just yet as he's still off the pace now here on the front straightaway. That's Morgan Mishler, the Wisconsin rider. Bronson Bauman on the 37 has moved up to the ninth position. This is group number two of our Mission Super Twins. Carlisle, the 36, Maxwell on the 18. It's his move up into the Super Twins class, as well as the 56 right there, Jordan Jean. He's going to run a select few Super Twins races. He's going to try to focus mostly on the singles class. 36, Colby Carlisle, currently 11th quick in this first round of practice. They come out according to the point stings, so some of the riders out here have not made it to a main event just yet including the 99 of Kevin Stallings, the 47 of Michael Hill, the 22 of Mitch Harbett, and the 56 of Jordan Jean, and as Ralph pointed out, the Honda 13 of Morgan Mishler. Here's Hill on the 47 right here. I like his, his setup this year. That yellow and blue looks good together. Yeah, it does. You know what, Ralph? I'm glad we're on the racetrack. Oh, buddy, you and me both. I was a little uh, hesitant to say we were going to get it in today, but... It's going to happen. The track's looking fast. It is definitely looking like we are headed in the right direction. There's the checkers for that session. Checker flag coming out right here. Max Whale well goes by. He's 14th right now with an 18.540 on the Harley. Not too bad for a new rider moving up to the Mission Super Twins class, Max Whale. Well. Highest qualified. Actually, he's the only Harley Davidson in the field. Look hey, at that. How about this? Dave Aldana is here. How dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> no doubt whose leathers those are, right? Definitely. An icon. Got famous on the movie On Any Sunday. Look who's behind him. The two, the raging Cajun himself, Jamie James. Also out there. This is the Bull Taco. Memphis Shades Boltaco Invitational is getting ready to roll on the racetrack. They got support from Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, and from the Turner Honda team. And I've had a lot of fun hanging out with Jamie James over the years. That's yeah. a fun guy. I miss his uh, his normal Vance and Hines colors, you know, the, oh, yeah. the kind of pink and yellow or fuchsia and yellow. Yep, yep, fuchsia is, and fuchsia yellow, would be yeah. better. Called a lot of his races over the days. I bet. All Donna's on the 13. Oklahoma's own Ronnie Jones on the 16. White Campbell's on that 72. 
Lloyd, that's Sonia Lloyd on the 28th. That's David Lloyd's daughter. The 64, Charlie Roberts. The two, Jamie Janes. 23 is Lance Jones. 58, Lucian Marino from Louisiana. The 15, Gonzo Garth Brow. Williams is on the 32. Perry Deke, the 42. Bonanno on the 481. Jerry Lacey on the 44. And Chris Weiss on that 61. This is their first time on the racetrack this weekend. There's Charlie Roberts, the 64. He's got the... The traditional Astro paint job. 72 White Campbell's a one of the younger riders out there. I believe he's only about 25, 26 years old. So maybe a little more, less fear involved. Scotty, this might be one of the deepest fields of Astro riders we've seen in the last couple of years. I mean, we always get a couple of big names that jump in, like Garth and Ronnie and so forth. But this one, pretty solid. We got the usuals, Garth and Charlie and rj but then you throw in jamie and some of these others and boy it's, that's why campbell on the 72 really battling the handling there and and david in there i mean this really gets to be pretty interesting up front yeah and then you get yes sonia lloyd out there she's making her name for herself in road racing and and she's you know just learning at botaka for the very first time out here she moves up a position up to seventh jamie james goes back to eighth now jamie james back up to seventh on the two bike look at this big bundle of riders right here again i don't know if anybody told them this is just practice they want to go fast. If you're not familiar with the Boltaco Astro, they were made in the 70s, and they are specifically made for short track racing machines. You want to throw that nugget out so, there? So, yeah, just like <laughs> Sammy Halbert last or two weeks ago at Daytona, a purpose-built flat track racing machine, the XR750. We'll see Sammy when we get out to the West Coast and – just like Sammy's bike, these Bull Tacos are air-cooled machines. They have Kickstarters on the wrong side. The wrong side for traditional motorcycles. It's the right side yeah. for them, but it's on the other side of the motorcycle. And I got to say, I think they're one of the prettiest-looking frat trackers you'll ever see. They are beautiful they machines. They are really sharp. Pa actually had a van painted up just like a Bull Taco Astro. Did he really? You know, just the, just the red with the stripe, you know, with the checkers and the, and the white yeah. and yellow stripe down the side. I don't think he'd put it. He didn't have a thumb on the side of it. But. They are really cool. Uh oh, looking. somebody's off the pace over there outside. That is, I believe that's Sonia Lloyd on the 28 coming to a stop. And she's kind of in a vulnerable position, but the checkered flag comes out, so they'll get her moved out of the way. So Gonzo Garth Brow at 19.250 on for the 15 by quickest here in practice. They have a little bit shorter, uh, you know, day than the rest of the the guys do in the other classes, guys and girls. But uh, they're only going to have one practice, then they're going to have a second practice and then they'll have a main event so they won't have a qualifying heat race today parts limited aft singles group is lining up over here into the staging area they'll come out according to their point standings and it's the two-time and defending champ right there on the number one ktm that's cody copy will lead him out looks like he got his new leathers made for today parts plus jacob companies on the front yeah, or is that the jersey over the leathers? I, I believe that's tell. the leathers right now. It looks like he got new leathers made quick, fast, and in a hurry. He was supposed to, yeah. 79 Dalton Gote. He should go well here. He finished second here last year. The 88 Chase sat off. Still looking for his first win. 59 Tom Drain. Finished 15th year. I talked to his mechanic, Dustin. He said it was a learning experience for him last year. He kind of got pushed around just a little bit. Oh, it's a cover, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. See how that sits on top of the shoulder yeah. there? I, Maybe they made a cover like a for his leathers. Yeah. Yeah, it looks more like a jersey there. Justin Jones, a rider from New York. He always goes good at Daytona, and he actually goes really well at this racetrack, too. He's on the 91. He's from New York. That 48 is Trent Lowe from Guilford, Indiana. 66, Logan Eisenhard. Man, he almost got a podium finish down there at Daytona a couple weeks ago on that 66 machine. He will come out after that. It's the 19, James Ott, who was the runner-up here last year. 55, Tyler Raggio. And the 82 is Travis Petten. And 265 is the Phenom, the Nikki Hayden AMA Horizon Award winner last year. Evan Renshaw will be coming out on the Turner Racing Honda. This is group number one for our Parts Limited AFT Singles, sponsored by Kicker. On the racetrack for the first time this weekend, here they come. Man, a little bit of dust already up by the wall. <laughs> Can't bring up the water truck. Oh, one of, bikes, one of those bikes. One of those bikes, yeah, like got a right up by the wall. Way up to the wall. There's the one, Cody Cop grabbing a handful. You're right, it is the jersey on the back. I can see it flapping around yeah. now. It, man, it sure looked like he had new leathers built already. It did, and it, but it looks like a... Yeah, it's kind of a jersey. Yeah, it's flopping yeah, around after yeah. a little bit. He had me fooled. 
Yeah, like, yeah, like the Speedway, speedway vest they yeah, put on yeah. over there with their different colors. And there's a 79 Dalton Gautier. Go time, they call him. He's originally from Pennsylvania, lives down in Pensacola, Florida now, travels with Robbie Bobby, his mechanic. It's going to make for some interesting road trips. I can't imagine. I, I think <laughs> I'd have to buy some noise canceling headphones. Chase set off to the top spot and last time by the 88, 17.849. There goes Eisenhard, the 66, up by the wall. I just now noticed Dalton Gauthier downshifting going into the corner. We saw only one bike downshifting and upshifting at Daytona because it's a flat, you know, yeah. slow down, smaller track. This is a lot bigger track, a lot faster track, but the watching, lap times are almost identical. Watching James on here. The 19. the 19. Looks like the 91 of Justin Jones right behind him. So swap the numbers around. There you go. Yeah. Currently the rookie Renshaw up there in that 10th spot so far. Again, this is our first round of practice. There are 32 AFT singles here today. The fastest 18 will make the main event. Like some bumps starting to develop going into turn number one there, Scotty. I think that will be braking bumps, you know, yeah. right about there. And when they get on the gas, you know, yes, yesterday when they were on the racetrack, when they were getting on the gas, deep ruts were forming because it was so soft. I think it's a lot harder today as they dug it up, aired it out, and then packed it back in. So I'm not surprised if we don't see some bumps, but hopefully the track crew can stay on top of that and keep our racing surface fast. It is fast right now, 17.791. Kind of. Oh, right there and in going into three? Oh, yeah. that's, that's one. Okay. That's that's turn one, right? Yeah, turn one. I get confused, you know, it's hard to see. Well, it's easy. It's easy to confuse me. Is that what you're yeah. saying? Thanks, Ralph. <laughs> I sure I'm glad I gave you that number plate I was yesterday. Just about, you know, I was just going to say <laughs> thank you so much for my number plate. You're welcome. Scotty delivered. And you're, you're way better than Emig, let me tell you. Race fans, you know what he did right away? He dropped it on the ground. And then what did I say? And he said, well, it's, it's no surprise. It was Scotty Dubler's number plate. It's already been on the ground. <laughs> Thanks, Ralph. Uh -huh. It was too easy, buddy. That, I, it was, I, 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 it was like right I set there. you up there. And, uh, yeah, I had to, you would have been more upset with me if I didn't. Yes, absolutely. One. I would have been very upset with you. Group two <laughs> rolling out of the racetrack. Parts Limited AFT singles presented by Kicker. There's the jet. Jared Lowe on the 63. He's on the big R Racing, Little Debbie Racing Honda this year. 75 Terran Santero is on the racetrack. Aiden Rusev is the 26 Yamaha from Illinois. 49 Chad Coast from California now lives in Florida. 24 Hunter Bauer from Canada. 87 Landon Smith from Florida. 157, that is Shorty. Ian Wolf from Ohio on the 157. Jacob Vandekoy on the 43. That's Jared Vandekoy's little brother. I'm telling you, watch these braking bumps going into turn number one. It really started to upset Jared Lowe's bike going down in there. Looks like the uh, 26 is closing let's, in on the let's leader. Let's watch this here. Oh. Uh, right in there. See okay. it? Okay. Yeah, and that will, that will upset the suspension. That is braking bumps from going in the corner so hot and trying to get it well down for the corner. So at some point, you'll have to try to start missing those, I believe, Ralph. Yeah. Change your line. And Rusev is trying to change his line to come up the inside. You can see that they get traction, then they lose traction, so it's upsetting the suspension. Here comes the 75 coming along with them. That's Terran Santero from Petaluma, California. Also, a couple other bikes are on the racetrack. Reese the Beast Potter from Kansas made his first main event at Daytona. And Jordan Jean back out there. He's the only rider riding both classes this weekend. He is on the 56. On the singles, he's on a Honda. Gene from Michigan. Bruce Sevens, after he got clear through some traffic, goes up to sixth place on that number 26. And here comes the 75 going by the 63. So, Ralph, the 63 was up front for a while. When you're up front, it feels like you're going fast, but now that you've been passed by a couple people, now you know that you, got some work to do. you have to step it back right back up. So it sometimes feels good to lead laps, but at some point, it might not be the fastest way around. And the Jared Lowe, speaking of the 63, is back there in the 17th spot right now. Sounds like the bikes are just on the rev limiter right before they let off going into the corners. And that's how you try to gear the bike so you are right there. So you're not wasting any, you know, forward progress by. Santero's pretty quick here on that 75. He got around. Oh, Jared watching? Lowe. Yeah, Jared, and yep. now he's already catching up. 
to the, the one in front of him, the 26 here. And, Bruce and Evans. it's definitely easier when there's somebody to go after. But I, you are right. 75 is coming on strong right now. He's up to fifth. Terrence Santero on his Honda, 18.028. As he goes by Bruce Evans, that might, might even be a, a faster lap. But Terrence Santero goes all the way up to fifth, 18.028. Boy, he's Ooh. not afraid to mix it up either, is he? Well, like he gets both, right up inside. Both of them, the front wheels come off the ground. When you get traction, it lifts the front wheel, and then you lose the traction, the front wheel goes right back down, or you have to you know, shut off, up the yeah. throttle a little bit. But, man, that was a good shot right there from our cameraman. That's a good look at those bumps there, Scotty. You can see the track yep. breaking up a little bit. Just a little bit. That guy's got a front disc on there, but there's no front disc brake lever. So that's Olin Kistler on the 40 bike from out in the Pacific Northwest. His dad offered me a fishing pole yesterday because Kristen really? wanted to go fishing, but we didn't get that done. Can you go over there? There's a pond down here. Pond, uh, right beside right. Pond to the Lockwood truck. behind us. Yeah, that's yeah. what we're calling it. Pond, pond Lockwood? Lockwood, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Poolora Pond. Pond would be good for you. <laughs> so he probably just feels more comfortable with that wheel, but he still has his disc on there. Again, there's no front brake lever on there, so. No harm, no foul. That is the 40 of Olin Kistler out there on the racetrack. This is group three, first round of practice. Kistler's on the 40. Landon Kalzak, 125, a new pro rider, as well as 175, TJ Welty. 221, Daniel Poole. 270 is Jess Reynolds. She's from Pennsylvania. 115, Justin Anselmi from California. 23 is Aiden Brown. 52, Shana Texter Bauman. 94, Ryan Wells. And the 288 making his rookie debut is Braden Fanders. Turned 16 just after Daytona. So this is his first race as a pro. Exciting times for that young man. And I can't even imagine being 16 and turning pro as soon as you can. Look at the 125 going in below the bumps right there. It's pretty aggressive. Yeah, and he drifted up the racetrack, couldn't keep it down. But it was no, a nice line. It's a I good liked idea. it. Yeah, if you can get that get that bike woe down and, and then make the turn. Landon Kalzak, the 125, up to 15th. Shana Texter Bauman up to 16th on the 52 bike. She ran good here last year. The 52 actually got a top 10. She was ninth here last season. Wouldn't you think this is the kind of track that really fits Shana's riding style? Yeah, absolutely. It's She's never been good on the TTs. She's really good on the half miles and miles, and she's getting where this this track, as, as you talk to Kristen Beat, she'll describe it. This track races like a half mile, right. so it should be a very good track for her yeah. as well. There she, there is, she right is, there. She's got Jake Johnson in her corner, you know, a, a, a defend or a former series champion helping her out with the bike setup. Of course, you know, she is so small. She's no bigger than a minute, so it's it's harder to set the bike up for her than it would be for somebody like Jake Johnson's weight. You know, it's just it's just a lot different. She looks pretty smooth. She went underneath the bumps she right sure there, does. just like you were pointing out. Hanging on to it. The white flag is out. And underneath the bumps once again going into one, and she also keeps it down. She's currently 13th as a few other riders have made their way towards the front of the pack. Braden Fanders, the rookie, the 288s up to 14th quick, just behind Shana Texter Bauman. Red flag is out, red flag. Raymond Rizzo brings the red flag out. Somebody is down, looks like in turn two. Get our down rider checked out quickly. Looks like they're just about done with that session right there. They were on lap six. Some of the riders already had got to lap seven. So coming off of turn two is where the rider is down. We do have a doctor that goes with us race to race, and we appreciate him coming to all the races with us. There's the Lake Lockwood Pond or Lake pond, Lockwood. Pond yeah. Lockwood. Yeah, we'll go with that. Okay. We don't know the real name of it, but I, I got you. All right. There is fish there. That's what I've been told. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Huh. Maybe, maybe we can do that later. Are you big into fishing? Nope. No? Are you? No. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about racetrack that, water fish. That might be just a catch and release fish. Yeah, I think that's <laughs> that's a good idea. Let's let him get bigger. Yeah, no, I, I'm not a huge, huge into fishing, although the American River used to run behind the house where I grew up. Okay. A block away. In California? In California, yeah. Yep. And... Uh, that was big for salmon. Really? Salmon would come back upstream. Nice, yeah. That'd always, be fun. It was fun to watch. Question from the other end of the truck. The oh question boy. is, is salmon or salmon? And I would say salmon. I don't know about anybody else. That's, that's but I would also tell you, 
I would have swore up and down it was Sonoya and not Sonoy. Correct. But so we were, what do we were corrected know? yesterday. It's Sonoy. So they just, it is Sonoy. But we just they just called this group off. They're going to take it back to the pits. They're getting our down rider checked out. It looked like possibly the 175. We couldn't see the number hardly from where we were at. But, yeah, I think it's Salmon. I said, I've always said Salmon, and I've never heard anybody else say Sonoy. Right. I mean, I haven't lived my whole life in the South, but I've lived in Charlotte since 1990, and I've heard people talk about this racetrack, and I'd never heard anybody say Sonoy. So, you know, I guess we need to get the word out, and hopefully we're doing that through our broadcast today. It is Sonoy, Sonoy. and not Sonoya. So we always are happy to... Uh, do it appropriately and get the right name out there. All, All right. Well, he... Let's put our hands together for the 175. TJ Wealthy is in his rookie season. He's up and on his feet. They're going to put him in the ambulance, get him checked out. But uh, we don't like to see anybody going down, but it uh, looks like he's going to try to shake it off. So it looks like yeah. he'll be okay. Glad to see that. All right. Well, we're going to step away while they take care of TJ, and we'll be right back to the Yamaha Sonoy short track after this.
モデルデザインっていうのがいいデザインなんだよっていうところを理解してもらう引っかかったりとか邪魔にならないようにっていうのであの成形品の中ではできるだけ角をなくして。Uh, people can have pride in their work. So this will be the way we're going to stay. This is our life. Motion Pro. We make innovative tools and products that help you maintain and repair motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs. Like the patented Pro Build Air Chuck, helping you manage tire air pressure on your motorcycle, ATV, or UTV. Easily adjust the Pro Build Air Chuck. Get past hot disc brake rotors with the pivoting angled head. Connect it with an airline. Or pair it with a Motion Pro digital tire pressure gauge. Reach for the Pro Build Air Chuck to manage your tires. Get yours at motionpro.com or visit Power Sports stores nationwide. Once again, for the 2024 season, all progressive American flat track classes are running the race proven DT4 tire from Dunlop, designed for pro and amateur riders alike. The DT4 has multiple compound options, an aggressive tread pattern, and can be run tubeless for greater overall performance. Dunlop, the official tire of progressive American flat track. Back on track. A Rookies of 79 501c3 charity was established in 2009 by former racers to help injured racers get back on the racetrack or the track of life. Assistance is provided to injured racers through our posted schedule of benefits and special fundraising programs, where 100% of your donation goes directly to ease the financial burden from an injury sustained on the racetrack. Check us out on the web at backontrack79.com and donate today. Every donation is tax deductible and will make a difference in an injured racer's life. VP Racing has been the world leader in race fuel for nearly 50 years. But did you know VP Racing also has a line of premium engine oils, gear oils, brake fluids, coolants, and additives? Find VP at your local auto parts store today or online at vpracingfuels.com. Rev up those taste buds with Mission Foods. Fully loaded tacos, fast wraps, piled high nachos. Whatever you crave, Mission will help you take your race day to the finish line. Now that's too fast, too tasty. Attention all race fans. Looking for more speed and excitement? Look no further than Sonoy Raceway. On Saturday nights, witness stock car drivers power sliding, racing door to door around the high banked dirt track. From front wheel drive cars to limited late models. Each lap promises to keep you on the edge of your seat. Located just 30 minutes from Atlanta Motor Speedway, conveniently off State Road 16. Visit Sonoy Raceway 1969.com for more information. Of Turner Racing, Honda team manager and team owner, a home race, so to speak, for you. How does it feel to be racing in your own backyard? You mentioned a bunch of your families here. Oh, yeah, man. I love this place. This is uh, the premier dirt track in Georgia. So, you know, Bubba owning it. Bubba's a friend of mine. Um, and me and Robbie Bobby actually pushed AFT to bring this race here. You and Robbie Bobby worked as a team together to do something? Yeah, we're still friends. <laughs> we, still, yeah, we still like each other. You mentioned you got a bunch of family here. Does that add to the pressure knowing that, you know, your cousins and your family's all out there? Yeah, it does because this is like my immediate family. So, yeah, you know, and all relatives and friends, cousins, like you said. So, yeah, if you don't do good here, you know, like last year, it's a little bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about last year. Four, five, eight in the season standings for your roster. At the conclusion of the season in 2023, what was going on behind closed doors for the Turner Racing Honda team? What were the conversations being had? Well, really, it wasn't. Um, we had a slow start to the season. That's, you know, everybody knows that. And then um, this was the linchpin, this race right here. We made some changes with our crew chief and, and how we mixed the team up. It really wasn't a matter of um, a bad season. It was more economy. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, we had to make some cuts that, you know, we probably didn't want to make, but that's just racing. 
And that's sports. Yep. That's cutting rosters. Yep. That's developing teams. You had told me you wanted a young rider like Evan Renshaw, someone that you could develop that would grow with the team. Was that something you weren't getting out of your previous riders? Well, no. I mean, yeah, kind of, because I didn't get to spin like with Chase, you know. I didn't really get to in his – we had him in his – I signed him in his last amateur year, but we didn't have time because we were so big, you know, didn't have time to spin with him. In other words, be at races with him, develop his talent, develop his skills, help him. We didn't have time. He kind of did it on his own. We did the amateur nationals, and that was it. And he went right to pro. So it took a little time his first year to get him developed. Now he's just phenomenal. When you – this offseason developed the two rider team and essentially downsized what was it about Trent that maybe prompted you to maintain him what was it about Evan that allowed you kind of the confidence to bring him on that in that he would complement Trent so him and Trent trained together with Corey Texter mm -hmm. and they travel together you know they're always they live in the offseason together so it was kind of easy that way and plus Trent's a good mentor in other words, he gives good feedback and he shares with, you know, Evan. Their riding styles are very similar. Their heights, obviously, similar. So, so bike setup, you can Yeah, them. so it was actually good for us because they travel together, so it's easier to get to the races and stuff like that. And, you know, Chase, we wanted to keep Chase, but Chase and Brian kind of wanted to do their own thing because they're a team, which I completely understood, and we still support Chase and, and Brian, too. How patient are you willing to be for Evan Renshaw as he pursues – you know, a first podium in, in the pro class. I know with Chase, there was this delicate fine line of dancing between pushing him and motivating him to earn a win and then not applying too much pressure. And then now you have an athlete like Evan. Um, what do you do with a rider like Evan as you are trying to motivate them towards their first win? We set some season goals for Evan. Um, we expect him to exceed them, obviously. And I, I have no doubt that he will. He had a phenomenal Daytona, as far as I'm concerned. Um, that's a rough track, you know, to learn, you know, be your first race. So he did phenomenal. And we're starting to get into the heart of the season. And with Corey, with his mindset that he's put on, put in Evan, so we can push him a little more than we could on um, Chase. And we just, just because we weren't familiar with Chase's mindset, because, again, we didn't get to spend that time together in the amateurs. But I've known Evan for a while. So, yeah, we got some season goals for him, make all the main events, get rookie of the year. And, actually, we, we want him on some podiums. Yeah. Trent had an impressive Daytona. Yeah, he did. All things considered. <laughs> <laughs> he stay off the deck. <laughs> <laughs> what were the conversations like after after Daytona for Trent? Because I, what I actually found impressive wasn't the fact he went down and made it back to the podium, but a lot of riders will get discouraged in situations like that. They'll then ride over their head. Trent remained cool as a cucumber throughout the entire main event. Well, because, you know, last year we had an oopsie and uh, he lost some points. Uh, we came out of there and we knew after when he had his wreck, you saw me trying to get his vest together. And we're just like, hey, man, just be smart, be smooth. Let's get out of here with, with a good finish. And that's what he does. But Trent's got that mindset. I mean, he's, you know, he's got ice in his veins. So he doesn't get too excited. And so it's good. When you look at this team this year, and I love that you're a sports guy, so I can kind of ask you these kind of questions. When you're developing an NFL team, it's like, this is a championship now team, or this is a championship soon team. Is the team that you have under your tent a championship now team or a championship soon team? Um, it's a championship now team with Trent. I mean, he's got all the tools he needs, and he's got the talent to get it done. Um, but, what you know, I've only been here for four years, and... You know, we've always finished up in the points. We got all these wins and stuff, but we don't have the championship. So my goal is the championship. So with Trent, I got a great shot. With Evan, yeah, I'm willing to wait. So I think he'll be fighting for it next year. So then if I have both of them back, I got two fighting for it in my pits. And that's what I'm looking for. So, yeah, you know, yeah, do I want that championship this year? Yeah, and I think Trey can get it. And a stout roster on the Turner Racing Honda team this season. Mike, thank you so much. And thank to all you. of Mike's family, hey, guys, have fun this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> Progressive is proud to be America's number one motorcycle insurer, protecting one out of every three insured riders. And they also offer coverage for your boat, RV, and other adventure vehicles. Quote motorcycle insurance online in as little as three minutes or bundle your insurance together today. By renting the tools, equipment, and attachments you need to get the job done and buying the machines you use every day, your local cat dealer and cat rental store can help you win wherever you're doing the work. Kicker Performance Audio. For almost 50 years, we've been rocking the planet with our world-class product covering everything that drives you, whether in your car, truck, boat, motorcycle, side-by-side, -side, or even on your head. 
Kicker Performance Audio's passion for bringing you your favorite music like you've never heard it before is what drives us. So wherever you need us, Kicker Performance Audio will be there for you. SBS is the official brake sponsor of Progressive American Flat Track, your single source of brake components for motorcycles, ATVs, and UTVs in racing, off-road, and for street use. Try the improved brake performance of the all-new SBS Better Brake Series. Find the brake pads, rotors, and clutch kits that match your bike on sbsbrakes.com. There's a reason why SBS is the preferred choice of street kings and race champions alike. Go ahead. These are the best motorcycle riders in the world, racing on the most challenging tracks on the planet. Only a crazy person would compete in this sport. Oh, oh boy. contact there! Uh oh, uh oh, Go watch down. out! Sliding through the corners, handlebar to handlebar. Going fast and on the edge, you're out of control. Every decision we make, we're gonna make sure win. Racing is all about being mentally tough. You might as well pack your stuff up and go home. It's speed. You feel it.
Olympics back out on track. It's important now because it is qualifying time for the Mission Super Twins. We're looking for the fastest lap in either this session or the next session that will get him qualified in. And Dan Bromley's waving his hand. He's not too happy with his Honda at the very moment. Now he gets back in line. Yeah, he wasn't saying hi to somebody. No, he was just letting him know he's going to take it easy for just a second. They did add moisture to the racetrack. For you folks at home watching on Flow Racing, they put some more water onto the racetrack, which is hard to believe, as you saw the racetrack yesterday, that they'd be adding water today. Dan the man, Dan Brownlee from Pennsylvania. His little boy's 10 months old already. How does that happen? Really fast. I guess so. My daughter's 30. Yeah, <laughs> mine's about to, my daughter's about to turn 21 and my son's about to turn 18. Blink of an eye, Dan, enjoy every moment. That's right, take a lot of pictures. Mies at the top spot, 17.798. His last lap, 17.791. So Mies looking pretty strong. He was fastest in the first round of practice and now fastest so far as the Honda pulls off and is coasting onto the back straightaway on the 62 bike. That's the trans lap Honda. It's not how you want to get your day started. Go up to this big group of riders coming off of turn number four. Dallas Daniels leading the charge. Johnny Lewis up there second quick on the Royal Enfield powered by Moto Anatomy on the 30, 32. Dallas Daniels goes by him. Johnny Lewis on the 10. That's who I was talking about. Dallas goes up to second. Johnny slides back to third. Breyer currently sitting fourth on the three. And then you got Blackjack, Trevor Bruner, fifth quick so far as the white flag comes out. Every lap important right now, and Mies on the charge, chasing after the 44 of Robinson. There's the jammer, Jared Mies. You can see well, those. He's charging, isn't he? Yeah, you can see the tires bouncing around just a little bit on those braking bumps. Now they're starting to form in turn three as well, Ralph. Yeah, I really like how he's charging here today. I think there's a, that's a man on a mission here this afternoon. Yeah, with the with the fifth and a sixth at Daytona, he needs to gain as many points as possible. Every round does count. Not as deep in the hole as he was a year ago at this time. Correct. However, he knows these are the kinds of tracks where he has to make up for where he's going to struggle. For example, on the TTs and the fact that he's already in a hole coming out of Daytona. And mainly the, the reason he's not in, in his deepest hole is because last year Dallas Daniels won the first two rounds. This year he got a first and a third, so that's the biggest difference. Jared had a fifth and a sixth, which is pretty good on our standards. Oh. Not, not good for him. He no. wants to be on the podium not every when you're a single champ. time. That's what you expect, right? Absolutely. Second group, Mission Super Twins qualifying round one. They get two rounds of qualifying. They have transponders on their motorcycles for you new fans. And Always in the same spot. Everybody has Correct. a transponder in the exact same location. And if you're wondering where that is, it's right behind the number plate on the fork tube up high on the motorcycles in the exact spot on every single bike. Because we will have finishes throughout the year that the fact that it's in the exact same location will be very important. Correct critical to the call. 17.798 is the quickest we've seen so far. It's Mies, and that was the fastest lap of the day in the Super Twins class. The singles were a little bit quicker, 17.791. So far, it's been the number one bike fastest in both singles and twins early on here today on Sunday. Max Whale just changing the shade of orange this year, right? Yeah. Goes from KTM orange to Harley orange. And gained a cylinder. And gained a cylinder, yeah. <laughs> and some Which weight. is more important. And some weight and gained some horsepower as well. That's an XG750. It is a liquid-cooled machine. He's the only Harley Davidson in the field today. Max is currently 13th quick in this round. Right behind him is the 25 of Ben Lau, the Holly Hot Rod. He is currently 12th as Colby Carlisle jumps up to the 11th spot. Now Max Will jumps up to 10th on that last lap. The killer whale. It's funny, I was just thinking about you saying that the only Harley in the field today, had you gone back, <laughs> what, 20 years, you would have said only Harleys in the field today. Exactly, it's, it's different how things change throughout Same history. Same words, just, yeah, just different, different order. Gets in order, yeah. yeah. Yep. Michael Hill goes up to 17th on the 47. The freak of nature, 99 Kevin Stallings, currently 18th. Dan Brownlee and his Honda, is back there 19th and Morgan Mitchell, the other Honda in the field today, is off the pace right now, back there scored in 21st. 
So they're just working the bugs out on those motorcycles. You can really see Max moving around on that seat. You know, I think this is a good fit for Max. He is a taller rider, and I think the twin, after he starts getting used to that motorcycle, will get better and better throughout the season. I tend to think you're right on that. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph Shaheen up here in the booth, and Scotty Dubler will talk to Kristen throughout the evening. Okay, so when it comes to the Bull Tacos. Yes, sir. Hi, David. Are you a red and white or blue and white traditional paint you know, I've fan? Got, I've got to go with the red and white. Because I don't remember. There's Gonzo. His is like a teal issue. Yeah, and that's the pretty 32, cool looking. The 32 is kind of a grayish version, but I, I'm old school. I like the red, black, and yellow and white. You know, but they all look good. They all smell good. Yeah, well, there's that too, right? They all sound good. The two strokers are coming up onto the racetrack. This is their uh, qualifying round one. They have a qualifying round two, and then they're going to have a main event later on. So there's no heat races for the Astros here today, according to the sheet I'm looking at. The two is Jamie James from Port Vincent, Louisiana. Well, you see that red clay down there on that wood. I guess that's the like go a karting track. track. Yep. But that's what you expect to see when you come to Georgia. Not as Graham pointed out yesterday, the white clay that, is mine. that we're seeing over exactly. here today. 13, Dave Aldana. He lives in Fayetteville, Georgia now. 15, Gonzo Bar Garth Brow from Flint, Michigan. Ronnie Jones from Edmond, Oklahoma. 23 is Lance Jones. Anderson, South Carolina. The 28, Sonia Lloyd, Milton, Georgia. 32, Charlie Williams, Roanoke, Virginia. 42, Perry Deke from Belleville, Illinois. 44, Jerry Lacey from Centralia, Illinois. 58, Lucian Marino, Shreveport, Louisiana. 61, Chris Weiss, Hellertown, Pennsylvania. 64, that's Flash. Charlie Roberts from Springfield, Illinois. 72, Watt Campbell from Baker. Louisiana and the 481 Joe Bonanno from Wires Beach, New Hampshire. I talked to him. Bonanno. The Bonanos, yeah. And it is, uh, looks, it's, it looks like Weir's Beach. It's I Weir's. Don't know. Yeah. Weir's Beach, that's Weir. up around Loud. Oh. That's up on Lake Winnipesaukee up there. That's right. where we went and hung out. Oh, after that's we right. Did after the race we did the race up there. up there. And what did we have when we were there? Ice cream. Uh, of course we did. Of course we did. We had we a have family to work on dinner. Our we have to work on our figures. We had family dinner and then <laughs> post-family dinner. You, me, Kristen, Tree, and that Ricky guy all went to uh, get ice cream. Watch Jamie James right here, the raging Cajun, getting way up to the wall. Doesn't you, let off the not gas. Not leaving a lot of room Whoa. there, Jamie. Man. Exactly. Take some paint home. Bounce off the wall. Scotty, I want you to watch something. I just spotted on this. Okay. Whoa. With Jamie, when he comes really back, going he's still wide. going back up there. Watch this replay again. If you notice, the, our, time, our scoring blocks are right there. But watch on the wall. There's a cut in where you can cross the track from below the flag stand right there. And look at how Jamie gets right there with the foot peg. Ooh, See that? Ooh. That could catch in there. And high side. Yes, buddy. It oh. could be really or bad. Or break things. Or you know, break, like your foot rip peg your, or foot your foot peg or your foot. Yes. Yeah. All of that and then some. Got lucky right there. You know what that made me think of was uh, Michael Waltrip at Bristol way oh, back. Oh, man. The, it just stopped it was the Bush series. And he was in the 30 car, right? vaporized that the, car. Yeah. The, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I'll never yeah. forget that right Thank God he got through that. 32 having issues over that. Charlie Williams from Roanoke, Virginia. Trying to get out of harm's way so we can keep going. Checkered flag is out. The 28. Sonia Lloyd having issues with her motorcycle once again, but she's still out there trying to get things dialed in. 19.024 for Gonzo. He's been fastest in the first round and fastest here in round number two. As we're taking a look at the staging area over here behind us, and that is the 59, the bomber, Tom Drain, trying to do better here than he did last year. With a 15th place finish, it was his first time on a track like this, and it was just hard for him to get a hold of it. And I talked to his mechanic, and he said, they think they got some things figured out. Getting some com comments from the other side of the truck. The other end, the plumber. The he bomber. He wants to call him the plumber. The plumber. Drano. Nope. Train own. So one of the bikes still stalled out there on the racetrack trying to get him out of the way. Then the AFT singles will come up next for their. There we are. Yeah, we're right in that white semi, all white trailer. semi. There's an argument as to which end of that semi is where the talent sits. Some of it's at the far end. On oh, the left to the side. Back to the left, and some of it's to the far end to the right. So we're we're on the right side. We are on the right side, yes. 
but you grew up on the left coast. I grew up on the Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Somebody asked me where exactly left you're coast. from. We were speaking of the American River earlier, and I said Sacramento. Yes. Right grew on. up in Carmichael, California, which Carmichael. is a suburb of Sacramento. Okay. Left coast, best coast. But you went to Chico State, and we're Chico going State, there we're soon. Go- Silver Dollar Speedway, baby. Here we come. And we're staying in the dorms. Yeah, why not? We stayed at the fraternity house. <laughs> we'll stay right, right at the fraternity Man, house. Man, I'm going to get in trouble. Here we come. The drone is going to land right. On. Is that Kristen just hanging out in the sun working on her tan? Uh, there's Jason. It is. Look at her. Look at Kristen. KB, what are you doing working on that tan? She's watching. Yeah, she's, she's you know, she's trying to say. No, you know what she's doing on there? What's that? She's checking out all the dog rescues. Oh, yeah. It is National Dog Rescue Week. That's what she's doing. But she's I probably got you. five of them already at home. Probably. Get ready, Cole. More puppies coming your way. Parts Limited AFT Singles presented by Kicker. On the racetrack, there is the two-time and defending champ Cody Cop in the lead. 79, Dalton Gauthier. 88, Chase Seta. 59, the Bomber, Tom Drain. 91, Justin Jones. 48, Trent Lowe. 66, Logan Eisenhardt. 19, James Ott. 55, Raggio. 82, Petman, the rookie sensation. 265, Evan Renshaw. Those are the bikes on the racetrack. Qualifying round one is on. Gautier to the top spot. 17.796 for the 79 bike. Uh, Kristen, what can you tell us about the SPF that you're wearing out there today? <laughs> so shameless little plug here. I'm actually watching live on Flow Racing. Our vantage point from the side of the track isn't as good as our cameras here on Flow Racing. So I'm able to watch these qualifying sessions live. Now, in between those sessions, I talked to these guys who are out on track right now. And one of the big adjustments that all these teams are making, tire pressure. Again, they are searching for more traction. So around the board, everyone making some tire pressure adjustments. A few teams making gearing adjustments. But I was asking the teams, well, is there a different tire you can run? Will you rasp the tires? And uh, some teams opting to rasp the tires. Other teams said they don't want to touch them. But there isn't a whole lot they can do with the tires this season because the rules changes. So they're kind of stuck with what they've got. And we may end up seeing that in the racing here tonight where guys are just kind of having to get creative or get brave with the lines they're running. It's good stuff, Kristen. Thanks, um, Kristen. Scotty, when it comes to this form of motorsport, Explain to the fans, how much tire pressure will you adjust? Because you see in other forms of motorsport, very slight pressure changes up or down can make huge differences in the impact. Well, to start here, to start off, Ralph, on the short track, you run the softest compound that Dunlop allows us to run. So that whatever that tire may be called today, you run that. And everybody is running Dunlops. And, And yes, and you run the softest one you can. And so you will mess with the tire pressure according to what the track is doing. When the track was wetter, you don't want to twist you know, twist that and, and, and snap the valve stem off, but you want to have it squat a little bit. When it dries out, you'll may put a little bit more air in there just to see or try to lower it down as, as it dries out. Lower the air pressure so you can have more of the tire touching the racetrack. If you air it up, it kind of rounds out. So it, it just depends, and it's rider preference too, how you ride that motorcycle. But look from up here, it looks like we're almost a little bit egg-shaped. I don't think it's quite yeah. a perfect circle, which no. it's hard to build a perfect circle anywhere. Yeah, yeah. but. An oval, I should say, not a circle, but look like it's a little bit bigger down here in three and four. So here they come with grid number two, but yeah, you'll, you'll make very small changes. And like on a NASCAR, some of the other, you know, like sprint cars, they have a bleeder valve, so it will stay the same pressure. Well, when they come out to the racetrack, you don't have that on bikes. And you also, you know, you're out there, you want that tire to stay as, as similar as you can, so it will heat up. When it heats up, it gets more air pressure. So you you might start lower if you want it to be at a specific temperature at the end of a main event, as to say, starting at the start of a heat race. Yeah, you got a plan for that. Definitely. The Roos Evans had a wild first lap. Scotty, watch this. I noticed him looking down immediately, so I didn't know what was going on. Man, he's hanging on to the Buck and Bronco right there. Now he's looking up to see if that happened to hit his foot peg. But yeah, he had a little bit of a moment right there in that first lap. And like we said before, every lap counts. Cody Cop still at the top spot here. He's fastest in both rounds of practice. And so far, fast, or one round of practice today. And so far, fastest in this qualifying session. He was in that first group. 49 out there on the racetrack. Chad Coase is the fastest on the track. He is up to sixth place back on the Waters Auto Body team. Last time he rode for them was back in 2010. That's how long he's been at this game. Man, Santero bouncing off the wall up there on the front straightaway. Whew. I think I'd stay away from that little cap in the wall like you pointed out, yeah, Ralph. It's a crossover so people can go from the outside of the track underneath the flag stand 
to the and down into the infield there. Correct. Santero still going all the way up to the edge of that front straightaway. Jared Lowe, the 63, is out there on the track. He's currently 17th right now. Reese Potter from Kansas goes up to 10th on that lap. 18.213 for Reese the Beast. You see the little bit darker spots right there. When those bikes are hitting it, the dirt's breaking away. There's the California kid right there, Chad Coase, on the Waters Auto Body KTM. The 49 currently sixth quick here in this qualifying session. White flag is out. Did you know that we made a deal? If he wins today, I get the victory lap again. Do you really? Yep, we made a deal. I'm All like, right. what about your team owner? He said, like, you both can go, so we'll see. Okay. Yep, I'll be running down there. I'll be out of breath and sweating again. Yeah, because you have to run uphill to get out I to know. there. Oh, man. That's not going to be easy. Can you help me? No, I can help you from here. <laughs> Cheer me on. Yeah, you run, <laughs> Forrest, run. <laughs> 17.739, that's the fastest lap we've seen so far. Right now it's been the one bike. Cody Kopp, who's in that first group, we have another group to go in this first round of qualifying for the Parts Limited AFT Singles presented by Kicker. If you're here, don't forget to get your raffle tickets. Somebody's going to take home a brand new Yamaha PW50. Very cool. That is awesome. Thank you to Yamaha for donating that motorcycle to the charity. 40 bike, Ole Kistler, 125, Landon Kalzak, 175 was the rider that went down earlier. TJ Welty, not sure if he's going to make it back out. 221, Daniel Poole, 270, Jess Reynolds from Pennsylvania, 115, Justin Anselmi, 23, Aiden Brown from Kentucky, 52, Shayna Texter Bauman, 94, Ryan Wells, and the 288 in his rookie debut, Braden Fanders, who was unable to race Daytona because he just turned 16 in between Daytona and here. Good looking colors on the 23 bike, that purple front wheel. The teal kind of look like Charlotte Hornet colors. Yeah, the old ones. There you go. New number for Aiden Brown. Got a two digit number by making a main event last year. There's Kistler on the 40, a new number for him as well. And there's Shane the Texter Bauman taking a look down to her right side, it looked like. Now she's going way low on that front straightaway. So she's trying something different on that 52 machine. She's off the pace right there. The 52 coasting on the front straightaway. Kistler on the 40 gets into the 24th spot. Braden Fanders, the rookie, is up to 17th, and there is the 52 off the pace. How about Braden Fanders? Last time by the 288, 18.233, up to 12th place for the rookie. Olin Kistler goes up to 22nd. Landon Kauzak up there in 14th, the 125. And here's the 40 chasing down the 23. Another busy weekend for Rick Ware, who owns the bikes that Shana Texter Bauman, Briar Bauman, and Cody Cop races. He's got uh, IndyCar out at Thermal. Mm -hmm. They've got the Dragster out at Pomona. And NASCAR is Dakota, and of course, flat track here. He's got more screens going on than Graham does, I He's think. He's busy. Yeah. He's busy. 23, take a look over his shoulder. He's not on the leaderboard right now. Aiden Brown, the 40, has tracked him down. Olin Kistler. Checkered flag is out in this session. This is our last group of the Parts Limited AFT singles presented by Kicker. Up next, we should have the entire second round of qualifying. I'm, I'm sure they're going to take a look at the racetrack and see yeah. if we're going to make any changes or keep on going. But Brayden Fanders up there gets up to eighth place in his rookie debut for the 288. Alexander Julian. I just saw your Hornets colors yeah. brought up. It's Alexander Julian, the famous designer who did the original okay. Charlotte Hornets Before uh, they left, they went to New Orleans and it came back yeah. to Charlotte, right? Yep. yep. All right. Throwing a little sports trivia in here. At Sonoy Raceway. Sonoy Raceway. We learned something new yesterday. Yeah, we did. Water truck coming back onto the racetrack again. <clears throat> don't forget to get your official merchandise of Progressive American Flat Track outside turn number one. Also, the the ladies are walking around selling raffle tickets. If you need something for back on track, that will go to help out anybody that gets injured in our sport. I wonder how that surface would have done for Supercross. Because, you know, every time we raced at the original Georgia Dome and then in Mercedes-Benz Stadium, mm -hmm. they always ran the traditional red clay. And 
Carmichael used to love that and, you know, and, and have big fun on that and would always say that the championship began when you got to Georgia, you hmm. got to Atlanta. Right. And it was a very specific type of clay and how it would develop over the course of the night and all that. I wonder how this white clay would have done in that type of a scenario. Looks like it's pretty good. I like it. And and Bubba Pollard found it for a reason. He likes it. And it's, it's very fast out here. Yeah. My favorite's that Mississippi mud you find up in Knoxville. Oh, yeah. That's some good oh, stuff. Baby. Hey, we're going to be right back to Sonoy, Georgia for more Yamaha Short Track. insurance get protected by america's number one motorcycle insurer when you quote online in as little as three minutes have more adventure vehicles bundle your boat rv or atv with progressive today to see if you could save parts unlimited the people behind we support the sport welcome you to this high action event we are proud to join with race fans everywhere and working to ensure our sport gets bigger and more exciting each season and you too can support the sport by visiting your local dealer who stocks products from Parts Unlimited. They've got the very best in high performance parts and accessories and the best support network in the business. Parts Unlimited, we support the sport. Rent, the tools, equipment, and attachments you need to get the job done. Buy. The equipment you use every day. Win wherever you're doing the work. Lincoln Welders is the official welder of American Flat Track Racing. When it comes to welding, cutting equipment, and safety apparel, Lincoln Electric is the choice. Go to LincolnElectric.com for all your welding, cutting, and safety apparel needs. And remember to hashtag weld red with all your projects. Once again, for the 2024 season, all progressive American Flat Track classes are running the race-proven DT4 tire from Dunlop. Designed for pro and amateur riders alike, the DT4 has multiple compound options, an aggressive tread pattern, and can be run tubeless for greater overall performance. Dunlop, the official tire of Progressive American Flat Track. Royal Enfield returns for the 2024 season, bringing back Build, Train, Race, and its seven new riders, rounding out to be a 10-women roster. Along with the Moto Anatomy powered by Royal Enfield, Johnny Lewis and team taking on their fifth season with American Flat Track. After a successful 2023 season of establishing a spot in the premier class, the team is excited to see what is in store for yet again another full season of racing. Meet the racers and check out the machines of both of the Royal Enfield's groundbreaking programs.
from Daytona. Those checks get handed out here today. And Kristen Beat was the winner of the Mission Super Twins Flow Fastest Lap of the Day winner. That was Dallas Daniels. And here's a presentation. Our Flow Racing Fastest Lap from round two winner, Dallas Daniels. Dallas, how cool is it that Flow Racing is partnering with the American Flat Track Series to help riders in the paddock? Uh, I think it's awesome. I think it's some of the biggest news of the year so far. And Flow Racing is such a such a huge platform for all types of racing. Like for me, coming into this race, I was watching car racing and stuff just because it's cool just to check out new things. And super cool that they're putting up extra money to to, for us for a fast lap a little bit more of incentive and in practice sometimes for some of us we're out there just trying stuff so it gives you a little more incentive to go fast a little bit more of a show for the fans and make sure you turn it tune in and watch flow racing for every race this year i thought i thought it was awesome that dad nick daniels putting his hand in there he said give me some of that money yeah, son i'd like to get some of that money back for all those races <laughs> exactly. i told you to as an amateur exactly but how cool was it for the season opener it wasn't 500 they sat right here in my chair and told you to add a zero to that check for day number one and yeah, mike floriani the head of flow uh cited five thousand dollars for each category for race number one which was the first night in daytona that was fantastic uh, with sammy halbert and Cody Cop, right? Chase Sadoff. Chase Sadoff, that's yep. right. Chase Sadoff. And part of the deal, too, is, Ralph, is they have obligations they have to do yeah. online. They have to talk about flow racing. Do a little social media, exactly. right? Exactly. So it pays off. It pays you know, tenfold or maybe a hundredfold if you want to talk about $5,000. But bikes are already geared up and ready to roll onto the racetrack. Final round of qualifying for the Mission Super Twins. And there they are. There's a look at Trevor Bruner, Bruner on the Will Davis font in number 21. I think that's so cool to see that particular font and number plate back out onto the racetrack. So Michelle DeSalvo standing just to the left of him there. So the time to beat in our Super Twins, it is 17.798. Meese right now has the top spot. Speaking of that, Michelle and Dave Zanotti, of course, Correct. behind that 21. Awesome to see Bill Warner here. Yeah. Yesterday. I haven't seen him today, but he was here yesterday. Drove all the way down from up north where he lives and to an, come support them. An extra set of eyes, an extra set of, you know, so brilliance. much data in his brain and, to help out that 21. And brilliance, right? Because Correct. Michelle and Dave are both brilliant. Both Absolutely. of them are brilliant Absolutely. when it comes to setting up these motorcycles. And then you bring in the legend in Bill, and boy, it's really a combination. The winningest crew chief in American flat track history, Bill Warner. Obviously, was the factory Harley Davidson team. Look, we got new riders out front. The three is out there leading the charge. That's Briarbaum right behind him. Is the price is right? Brandon Price from Maryland on a brand new combination of a team. How many, because we only had one practice session today, Scotty, how yep. many riders do you think approached the first qualifying session as a second practice session and said, I'm going to learn as much as I can in these first two sessions? Then I'm going to hang it all out there in the final qualifying session, which is this. I think a lot of them did. I think the track, you know, as they continue to put water on the racetracks, we, we saw that replay right there in the 92, hitting that breaking bump right there in the corner. But I think a lot of them did. You know, use that as that second practice session. But also, if there's more moisture on the racetrack a few moments ago, maybe it was faster a little bit ago. So it's it's that, that fine line. You know, if you're out there with a good group of riders and you feel like you're going fast, you just go for it. Plus, after that second round, now you had an opportunity to see what the track's going to do after they go back and put water on it and groom it a little bit. Right. Now they know what to expect, right? Absolutely. They're Looks like everybody's kind of turned the heat up a little bit here. I was going to say, they're you know, just like we saw Kristen Beat watching on Flow Racing, these teams are doing the same thing in the pit area, so they can... They they're, have they're watching dog videos, too? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, possibly, or watching the racetrack and watching how it develops right now. And they can sit there and do that in their pit area instead of having to go up to the fence and watch it like the old school days. The 20 bike, Jared Vandekoy, slips off the groove down here as we take a look back at Mies. He's currently second quick in this round with a 17.861. Dallas Daniels quickest in this round with a 17.848. And that is faster than Mies was in the first round of qualifying. Alice likes those $500 checks. And don't forget, there's one for the Parts Plus Pull Award That's available true. here today. That's true. There's Brute around the 21. Checkered flag is out. Whew. Boy, they're getting up to that wall. Clean our camera lens while you're up there, would you? Man. 
All right, so Jared Meese is fastest overall at the moment. He's his fastest lap in the first round, 17.798. Right now, Dallas fastest in this round, 17.848. Oh, so right. Meese still at the top spot, but not by much. Dallas finding some speed right here so far in this second round. Up next, group number two, Mission Super Twins, the 36 Kobe Carlisle. There is the D-man, Declan Bender on the 70, doing it for Grumpy Old Men Racing. BricksAuto.com, Johnny Goad, another legendary tuner in our sport, turning the wrenches on the 70 bike. 18, Max Killer Whale, 25, Ben Lau. 37, that's the younger brother, Bronson Bauman. 13, Morgan Mischler on the Trans Alp. I was saying that wrong a few moments ago, so there's a lot going on today. There's Brown. a lot happening. 22, the mower, Mitch Harvitt. 56, Jordan Jean. 47, Michael Hill. And the 99, the freak of nature, Kevin Stallings. So right now it's Meese with the fastest lap so far, and that was in the first round of qualifying. There goes the flying tomato. And speaking of the flying tomato, his mom actually sent me a message and says, is it just her, or why are the same people going through the same breaking bumps? Well, Doreen, Doreen, Breaking bumps for the fastest line right now. It's hard to go around it because you gotta go further around the racetrack. Or if you go below it, then you have to slow down and you go up the racetrack a little bit. So I think where the braking bumps are is the common line. Probably where there, there's probably braking bumps there for the race cars that normally race here too as well, Ralph. Yeah, you're probably right. It's just a product of a circle track. Or an oval track. Or short track. Dirt. Dirt track. There you go. Flying Tomato looks like he's feeling pretty good today. Currently in the eighth spot here in this round of qualifying. Sliding way back on the seat to put the traction over the rear wheel. You tend to find in motorcycle racing quicker than you do in sprint cars or dirt lay models or big block modifieds that you have to go around those bumps sooner than in the four wheel categories. And the four wheel stuff, they can still charge through there even when they get to be pretty ominous and it won't upset you quite as much as when you only have a small patch of Dunlop tire on there it definitely upsets where your wheels are at what your handlebars are doing what your suspension does when you have four wheels out there planted you know going into the corner it's a lot different Ben Lau making the pass on the uh, number 18 right there that's the Holly Hot Rod Ben Lau from Holly Michigan it's on the 25 bike the Rackley team has painted their bikes all white this season so they say it's because Jeremy Rackley wants to be able to see those bikes on the racetrack that's the 25 right there and the 67 to Davis Fisher. 25 is ninth, and Davis Fisher, the 67, currently 12th in this round of qualifying. That's why Corvette Racing went with Velocity Yellow, because it stands out like no other. You can't miss that on the racetrack, right? It's like, how do you miss it? Exactly. Doug Feehan, the team manager, wanted to be able to see his cars. and He could certainly hear them back in the day, and he wanted to be able to see them no matter where they were on the track as well. So the fastest lap in this round was the 32 Dallas Daniels, 17.848. So that means Jared Meese will be our fast qualifier for today, 17.798 here in the Mission Super Twins. Memphis Shades, Multaco Astro Invitational is up next. They have also support from Roof Systems of Dallas, Texas, and from Turner Racing. And here they come. Do you know, and I, I don't know this, and I need to look this up, do you know, uh, were there special names for the different colors with the Bull Tacos? You know, I don't remember ever hearing the different names. You know, I just know from I'm the... thinking like, you know, Mopar you had. Right, Mopar Blue and, or Petty Blue. Well, that that's different. I'm talking about the uh, street cars. Oh, yeah, I, I don't really... I remember just the, the Bull Tacos. I remember the red one, the traditional red. Bikes are on the track. Here comes the Memphis Shades Bull Taco Astro Invitational. Do a little Googling here, see when we can find get that, out. Get that Google machine or maybe going. somebody can text us if they know. All right. Those things sound good out there, the two strokers. Haven't heard much of them using the compression release that used to help them slow down, but now they have the really good brakes on these bikes as there's Charlie Robertson. He actually builds the CR Astros that a lot of these riders have been buying and using, and one rider puts their hand up, gets out of the way right in front of Charlie. Gonzo Garth Brow, fastest in this round, 19.451.
Charlie Roberts, the 64 from Springfield, Illinois. Well, I'm seeing uh, Torch Red. Oh, I like that. 32 which off which the face. Which is Charlie also Williams. a uh, Corvette color. Garth Brown going even faster. 19.363, the 15, the fastest bike on the track once again. Also seeing Ford Sunburst Red, hmm. which is an original Ford color, and Ford Silver Fox. Nice. Oh, interesting. Getting into some traffic. There goes Jerry Lacey going down one lap. I don't see Ronnie Jones taking any times out here today. They went back to Oklahoma. And white flags out. Charlie Roberts putting his hand up, slowing down. There goes another bike pushing off the racetrack. So this track, you're pretty fast. Oh, one of the bikes getting into the mud in the infield. Watch out. 42 Perry Deke. He's up there in the eighth spot. Charlie Roberts cruising along and checkered flag coming out right there for Charlie Roberts. And Dave Aldana across the line just about gets into the wall in the 13 bike. Gonzo Garth Brow, 19.363. So track slowing down just a little bit. 19.363. Charlie Roberts was slowing down a couple laps early in that one. All right. Well, as we mentioned, they gave out $500 each category, the flow racing fastest lap of the day. You saw Dallas Daniels got it for the Mission Super Twins in the second race in Daytona. Well, they only had to walk to the Essence and Racing Tent to hand out both checks this weekend because the other, as Kristen Beat will tell you, was Tom Drain for the singles. Racing fastest lap award winner Tom Drain from round two at Daytona. Tom, how cool is it that Flow Racing is recognizing the fastest lap of the day? Yeah, it's really good that they're putting in that support and being able to get like $500 is a lot of like help for all of us. And it's really good that they like do this and it really is good for all the riders. Your singles class, fastest lap from Daytona, guys. Well, getting back to our pain scheme, the favorite, of course, is the purple for the Mopar guys. You know what they used to call that? Was it plum? Plum crazy. Yeah, I was going to say it had something to do with plum. Classic remember, 70s right? Yeah. name, right? Exactly. So switching gears to the Parts Limited AMT Singles presented by Kicker there on the racetrack. This is their final round of qualifying. There goes the 88 going blasted by the 59, the 1, and he wants to lead this one to the green flag. Qualifying. We're looking for the best lap. The fastest lap in the first round was a 17.739 from Cody Kopp. And now Cody's back there in the traffic just a little bit. He wants to see what everybody else is doing, maybe. Or doesn't want to show off where he's riding at to the fast guys in front of him. On the track, one Cody Cop, 79 Dalton Goat, 88 Chase Saddle, 59 Tom Drain, 91 Justin Jones, 48 Trent Lowe, 66 Logan Eisenhard, 19 James Ott, 55 Tyler Raggio, 82 Travis Pett, and 265 Evan Renshaw. Those are the bikes on the racetrack right now. Group one of your Parks Limited AMT singles. the wall of the front straightaway. Sat off quickest in this round so far, 17.933, keeping our eyes on the 66. Now moving up here to the 48, Trent Lowe. And now to the 55, Tyler Raggio. Raggio Racing Sluggo Racing KTM. Switched brands in the off season, the 55 did. Also moved from Georgia up to Champaign, Illinois in the off season. Here we go back up to the front. 59 of Drake, 79 Gautier, and there's the 88 of Sadoff. One of Cody Coffin will be fourth in this round. You didn't change brands a lot, did you? I didn't. I was, you know, back when I was riding, you know, if I was on a, a single cylinder, I was on a 600 cc Rotax and I rode an 883, which is all Harley Davidson. And right. then when I got to the Premier class, I rode a Yamaha which was a TDM 850, which we had it bumped out to a 920 in the Super Tracker class. 
and that was a handful. As you look back on it now, is there one you wish oh, yes. you had switched to? Absolutely. Well, I wish I had the money to afford to, to ride an XR 750 well, or yeah. would have got the opportunity to ride one of those, or even an RS 750 Honda would have been nice back in, yeah. in my day. But, you know, I, I rode with what I could and what I could afford and what I got rides on, you know. So, yeah, there's always stuff you, you wish you could have done, but yeah. I enjoyed my career. Did okay. Did great. What are you talking about? Well, thank you, Ralph. I appreciate it. Live my dream. Absolutely. Group two rolling onto the racetrack. Final session of qualifying. There's one more group after this, and then we'll get ready for our heat races. So the order of events got a little bit changed for today. A lot of people never be able to say they did that, Scotty. I appreciate it. It was, you know, and the best part, too, was going to every race with my dad. 100%. And Graham. Graham went to a lot of them. We tried having her run the stopwatch for a while, but she got too excited. So she was a better <laughs> spectator than a stopwatch girl. I could see When that. I was racing, I could when, see she, that. when she was doing the races at Sioux Valley Cycle Club in Sioux Falls, she would do timing, scoring, sign-ups. Sell hot dogs, yeah, tickets. Any, anything and everything. But when deal. I was racing, my dad said she got a little bit nervous out there. So. More so probably with you than she did with your dad. Yeah, right. Absolutely. More so with my dad, with my grandpa, with my aunts or my uncle. Yeah. And, but it was when me and my cousin were out there, she was a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame her. That's great. There's a 75. Taryn Santero from Petaluma, California, as we go to the California kid, Chad Coast, the 49. Chad had a good run in that first round of qualifying. He was up there around sixth. Right now, he is ninth in this session. Gautier second right now. Tom Drain is third in this final round. A few more bumps are developing. And I, I, I think part of that too, Ralph, is we've talked about why there's bumps, but it's soft underneath the hard stuff. And so that soft stuff's going to move, especially yeah. when you uh, throw it into the corner and apply the brakes or just really lay it into the corner. It's going to move the dirt around. Or right here off of turn four, that's when you're hard on the accelerator. So. They're moving dirt around a little bit. They're doing a good job in between sessions of getting back out there and, and working the track. So it's it's not getting as bad as you might have thought it would. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like rough as Real motocross soft. track, you know, yeah. like a washboard. So that, you know, the track there's the track's doing really well. Final round of qualifying. There's one more group after this, the singles. Now, after that Twins main event coming up, Ooh. it might look a little different. Yeah, that's a long race. Speaking of plum crazy, Tim at Pro Plate said his uncle had a plum crazy 1970 Dodge Charger with a 440 with a six pack. Wish I had that. Yeah. There's the 49 Chad Coast trying to go under the bumps down here in turn number four to the checkered flag. Bet that thing had a pistol grip shifter in it too, right? Probably so, yeah. That was probably a lot of fun. One more group to go in practice and qualifying, and then we'll get ready for our qualifying heat races out here today, this afternoon. We'll have two heat races of singles, two heat races of super twins. We'll have the Astro, that's the Memphis Shades Astro Invitational main event. Then we'll have our last chance qualifiers, our challenge races, and our two main events. There's just still a lot to, to oh, do here today. Oh, we're just getting started, yeah. Yeah. Last group of qualifying rolls onto the racetrack. We'll see if 52, see what was going on in the last session, see if she can finish up this session. Just getting up to speed right here in turn three and four, now on the front straightaway. 52, Shayna Texter Bauman finished ninth here last year. 40 on the racetrack is Owen Kistler. There is actually Jess Reynolds right there. So that's the two females that are racing with us in the singles class. There's also one in the Boltaco class. Landon Kalzak on the 125, TJ Welty on the 175, Daniel Poole 221, Olin Kistler the 40, Jess Reynolds 270, 115, Justin Anselmi, 23, Aiden Brown, 52, Shana Texter Bauman, 94, Ryan Wells, and the rookie in his first pro race, 288, Braden Fanders. They're actually not even making a straightaway on that front straightaway, Ralph. They come no, off the big corner, arc. all the way up to the wall, and then aim it for turn number one. Nine three three fastest lap in this session. So unless somebody finds something on these last couple of laps, it's going to be Cody Cop with the fastest lap in that first round. So the track is drying out a little bit, slowing down just a skosh. 
Shane texts for Bauman up to 15th, 18.352. That's the winningest rider in AFT singles history with 19. Cody Cop closing in right now has 16. Oh, man. Shannon Sex Brownman hits one bump down there right in the middle of three and four and sets her up out of the saddle and that puts the weight on the front end. Then you get a little head shake and try to get it woed back down. Checkered flag is out. Final round of qualifying here at the Yamaha Sonoy Short Track. These heat races are coming up pretty soon. You know, we talk about Shayna and how successful she is racing in the singles category here, the winningest rider of all time. But, you know, really, we need to expand that out for Shayna and put her in proper context with women all across the board in motorsports. And she is truly one of the most successful women racers, period, in the history of motorsports. You put her up there with the Shirley Muldowney and Erica Enders, Angel Sampi, uh, Michelle Mouton, the famous rally racer, people like that. She belongs in the same conversation with all those famous racers as well. I, I would agree 100%. And she, you know, she was in the premier class for a while. She rode on the factory triumph team when they were making their, their way back. And she just does better on that single. Nothing against her. She just fits the bike better. She rides better on that bike. And, you know, hats off to her. You know, she's... Stats don't lie, Scott. Exactly. 19 wins. And still probably one of my favorite races I ever called as an announcer was Knoxville, Iowa, in which she got her first win. Well, they're going to do a little uh, track prep. They're going to get the uh, starting area all lined up appropriate and everything because, Scotty, we're about to go racing. So while they make some quick fixes to the racetrack here in preparation,